Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So uh, it's great to see that you guys are here early. It's great that you are, you know, coming to the class, um, you know, on, on time. So that's amazing. It's amazing news. Now, uh, tonight we are going to be getting started with, um, well, the third to last class. So it means that we are only going to have, well, tonight and two more classes to finish this course. So we are about to wrap it up, uh, which is Good news to some, bad news to others. So, you know, it's it's always the bittersweet in life. Uh, but yeah, it has been an amazing pleasure thus far. And I hope it is the same, you know, on your end and that you also feel like it has been a nice experience. Um, for tonight, what do we have? Well, we're going to continue talking about um, the present continues, which is, of course, the main topic that we are following right now. We also are going to talk or we're, we're gonna have, we're gonna review a conversation that has to do, of course, with the present continues. Then uh, we are going to be talking about time zones, you know, like the different times that are around the world. Like, you know, what's the time at a specific portion of the world um compared to another portion of the world? I feel like it's already well known, you know, that the world has like different time zones or different hours, depending on where you are. Um, for example, if we live here, as or as we live here in El Salvador, um, right now it's 7 p.m. for us, but in other regions of the world, um, people are living in different um, times. Like, for example, if you are in the eastern side of the United States, it would mean that you are uh, most likely living at... Um, what, 9 p.m. right now? And if you live at the Western side, it is, you know, impossible that you are at 5 p.m. So those are tiny changes that happen in our region. But with, for example, Europe or Asia, it will be totally different. It would be, for example, right now in Asia, it's probably dawn. You know, they are starting to see the sun or starting to have um, sunrise. So those are things that uh, we're going to be covering as of course, as I mentioned, there are different time zones or different uh, moments around the world at the same uh, specific moment that we're living right now. So that's part of it. Also, we have, um, well, a conversation that has to do with time, and we're going to be learning how to tell the time. Um, there are different ways in which you can ask for the time. The most common way is what time is it? That's the one that we have been um, hearing from since basically the beginning or the dawn of English, you know, what time is it? That's the most common one. Um, oh, there we go. So that's like the most common uh, phrase that we have heard or that we have used to ask for the time. However, we have other versions. Like, for example, if you ask something like, what's the time? And it will have basically the same meaning. What's the time? It sounds more like more... Um, updated, you know, more um, century, 21st century than what time is it? Because what time is it? If you ask me, it sounds relatively old. So yeah, um, you can also use, for example, um, can I have the time? That's another option that people sometimes use. Can I have the time? If you see that someone is wearing a watch or they maybe they have their phone out or something in which they can access the time and you don't, um, you can ask for something like that. So can I have the time? That's one thing. It, however, this one is not that common, all right? It's not like you're going to be asking every time, can I have the time? But like teachers, for example, when they're about to start an activity and they need to measure the time that they're going to spend on said activity, um, they were very likely to ask you, can I have the time right now? And, you know, of course, if there is one person who has access to time or who has like a watch or a phone, as I just mentioned, you will simply and gladly um, answer with the correct format for giving the time. Well, so those are the main three things that we have. If we have a chance, of course, we might continue dealing with other topics, but I don't think so. I think tonight it's mainly going to be about those three. Now, I have mentioned, um, you know, different places in the world. So... Right now, the question that we're going to have tonight for the practice is what country would you like to visit if you had the chance to go anywhere? Sí, o sea, imaginémonos esta vez, quiero que sea 
algo imaginativo, no necesariamente algo eh, real, ¿verdad? Porque si nos pusiésemos a hablar de real, probablemente solo nos alcance para llegar hasta San, hasta San Salvador. Bueno, ustedes son de San Salvador muchos, pero tal vez solo nos alcance para llegar, qué sé yo, a Chalatenango. Sí, si nos pusiésemos a hablar de, en realidad, lo que podamos tener. Imaginemos nada más, if it's your dream. Where would you like to go? ¿Cuál sería su lugar soñado? O sea, si ahorita se presenta ante ustedes, ¿verdad? Um, Elon Musk les dice, elige el lugar que quieras visitar, te voy a llevar, que no sea la luna. Eh, where would you like to go? What would be that place? And what would you do there? Sí. ¿Dónde les gustaría ir? O sea, ¿qué lugar en el mundo quisieran visitar y qué quisieran hacer ahí? Sí. Esa es la pregunta tonight. Where would you like to go anywhere in the world? And what would you like to do? So, I feel like maybe starting with um, someone like Roxana tonight. So, Roxana, in your case, if you had an option or an offer like that, you know, someone who's going to pay um, for you to go anywhere, wherever you want in this world, and uh, also that they're going to give you um, the chance to do whatever you want as well, where would you like to go? What would be that destination for you? Buenas noches. Perdón, mm -hmm. good night. Okay. Uh, um, um, would like to go to Cancun because I um, like the beach and uh, I like uh, comida mexicana también. Mexican food? Uh -huh. Eso. Okay, great. Nice. I mean, it okay. sounds like a nice idea, you know. Going to Cancun to enjoy the beach and also um, enjoy some Mexican food, some original Mexican food, because we have tried Mexican food many times, but who knows if it's the same flavor. So nice, very nice, uh, nice idea. So good. Sounds amazing. All right. How about in the case of Robert? If you, Robert, were offered a chance to go anywhere in the world and, uh, you know, this person will pay for you to do anything, where would you go and what would you do there? Um, my favorite place, place, mm -hmm. go, go, is yes. uh, uh, Roma. Oh, Rome. Okay. And what would you do in Rome? ¿Qué te gustaría hacer en Roma? Uh, es que hay muchos lugares de Italia que me llaman la atención porque me soy fanático pues del, del ciclismo, ¿verdad? Y Ahí se dan muchas carreras internacionales, pues, y me gustaría conocerla. Mm, okay, interesting. Very good. So, yeah, I mean, um, and I do know that Italy is very into sports and very into racing sports. And, of course, cycling is a racing sport, as, you know, many other um, motorbike racing sports. But, yeah, it's great. And, and uh, also, Italy has some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world, at least in my opinion, because they have access to basically everything. You know, they have coastal ridges, they have um, mountains, they have plains, they have grassland. So it's like just great. So yeah, I would also like to go to Italy just to see it because Italy seems to be such an amazing place. So very good choice, very good choice. And, um, you know, very good idea to visit Rome. So good, 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 great. Okay, how about um, Senia? In your case, Senia, if you would have the chance to go anywhere in the world, uh, where would you go and what would you like to do there? El lugar que me gustaría visitar. Mm -hmm. ¿Y qué le gustaría hacer ahí? Es, ay, lo voy a decir en español porque no sé cómo decirlo en inglés. Mm -hmm. Pero el lugar que me encantaría si visitar es el Salar de Uyuni. Se encuentra en Bolivia. Bolivia, ajá. Uh -huh. Y yeah, me so... gustaría, uh -huh. y me gustaría el atardecer, que yo soy mega fan de los atardeceres. I am some fun lovers. Okay, there we go. There we go. Great. That was nice. So you you gave us an English phrase at the end. So yeah, it's the um the uni the uni salt lake. Basically, that's how you say it in English. It's a salt lake, como un lago de sal. So yeah, it's a salt lake. And uh, I have seen so many pictures um, of that place and it simply looks outstanding, you know. Um, and I hope that one day you can make it happen and you can go there because it's close. You know, it's not like 
uh, to the other side of the world. So it's relatively close to go there. Um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, it's a nice thing that we have, I feel, as a new generation or relatively new generation. Um, we feel like we have access to more things to like to see the world in a larger scale than people like our parents used to do. Um, I don't know about your parents, but in, in my case, my dad, he's not like as open, you know, he doesn't really know or likes to know much about like other places in the world. And in my case, I'm always reading about other places. I'm always watching videos about other places that I would like to visit. And I feel like that like has opened our minds to like uh, knowing more and wanting more. So yeah. And you know, people our age or people um, like older than us, they don't have the same ideas because they feel like it's impossible. But I hope that you guys, you know, you're going to make it happen in your lives. How about Luis, the Danielson? In your case, the Danielson, if you had the chance to visit any place in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? I would like to travel Italy too. Uh, I would you like to taste the food and wines. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, um, Italian cuisine and Italian liquor has an amazing reputation. I mean, they are supposed to be some of the best in the world. And uh, something that I would love to do is that I would like to go to Italy to like a classic pizzeria and try pizza as it's supposed to be. I don't know if you guys have seen any videos or anything about that, but the same way that we don't feel okay when people have, um, you know, pupusas with like, um silver silverware i feel like it's the same in italy probably that then when they see us having pizza and like putting all the things like the extra things that we put on pizza i feel like they you know feel like um what you might call it it's like uh disrespected you know probably they feel disrespected so i would love to go and try my best you know to have a pizza as it's supposed to um to be had i feel or i have uh, heard that it's in Palermo, the place where they sell pizzas that, you know, that you can fold them and you can have them like if it was like a bread. So yeah, I would love to try something like that. And also the wines, as you mentioned, because um, yeah, uh, Italian and Spanish and uh, Chilean wines are supposed to be some of the best in the world. And I'm a very big wine person. For example, uh, this Thursday, I am very likely to have some wine because I normally do that when I finish the classes, you know, after the, the last class is like I have, um, you know, some wine and um, hot wings. It's I don't know. It's just a practice that I have like on, on the last Thursday. I like to have some wine and some, um, yeah, some hot wings. So, yeah, some of the things, you know, that people do anyway. Uh, that sounds great. Sounds amazing, you know, to visit. Um, Italy. How about moving on if we hear now from Carla Vanessa? In your case, Carla Vanessa, if you had the chance to visit any country in the world, where would you like to go and what would you like to do there? Mm, I would like to go to Canada mm -hmm. uh, for it. it is Tipis. For, for su ciudad. Oh, cities. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Um. Well, in my case, if I'm not here to share, I don't want to go to Canada. I would like to move to Canada. You know, it has been my dream since I was very young. And I'm actually trying to take some steps towards that goal because I feel like, you know, I am growing tired and more tired of my country uh, day by day. So uh, it has been, you know, happening to me since a long time ago that I want to move there. And I have also seen so many things about that, you know, about Canada and the, the chances and opportunities that you have there. Um, so, yeah. And some cities are also outstanding, mostly during the winter. Um, I have been, you know, at cities where, where there is snow during the winter. And I have to tell you that it is beautiful to watch. Of course, if you are not good with um, the cold weather, 
it would be a bad experience. But in my case, with the time at least that I had to spend in cold weather, I did great, in my opinion. And uh, because I never got sick, you know, because of the weather. So I enjoyed myself by, you know, walking on the snow streets or by um, doing all sorts of activities that had to do with like the cold in the city. So yeah, Canada has a lot of that to offer and I feel like it will be an amazing experience to live. So very good. Sounds great. Very, very good. Um, how about Guadalupe now? Uh, in your case, Guadalupe, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, to any country, um, and do anything, where would you like to do? Oh, sorry, where would you like to go, and what would you like to do? Um, I would like, uh, sorry, uh, I would like to visit for, no, 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 I'm not going to try. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would like. Uh -huh. Okay. I would love to visit Mexico for mm -hmm. it is gastronomy because I love the way of preparing food. Uh, I would also like to visit Mexico for it is park um centro de atracciones. No sé cómo se dice. Okay. Sería un um. Uh, ah, dang it. It's a uh, centers, centers, entertainment center, kind of. Was... Yeah, like an entertainment center. All right, so great. I mean, our country doesn't have any of those, and uh, Mexico does, so why not? You know, visiting Mexico is one of the things that people always want to do, and people who live, you know, in other countries of the world. Everyone wants to come to Mexico to do something. In my case, I have been a fan of Monterrey for such a long time. And I feel like, I don't know, it doesn't have much to offer, I feel. Um, but I will so much love to spend some time there and, you know, get to see how everything is, how if it's really what people say about Monterrey. So I would love to, um, to like see it, you know, hand to hand or, or like face to face. But who knows, as I said, all that we have to do as this generation goes is just to push forward, you know, to try our best and um, to try to, uh, to achieve the goals that we have. So yeah, it would be amazing if we had the chance to like, um, to go there. So yeah, it would be very, very good. All right, so one last person, and I feel like the last person tonight is going to be Miriam. So in your case, Miriam, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world and do whatever activity you want, where would you like to go and what would you like to do? Um, I would like to travel to Mexico too, or maybe Iceland. Hmm. Okay. And what would you like to do in Mexico or Island? Iceland? Um, in Mexico, um, maybe try, um, it's gastronomy. Okay. And Iceland, I don't know, yes, I like the, the weather. <laughs> it looks like it's amazing. Yeah, I have seen, uh, as I said before, you know, I don't know if you guys are the same. But in my case, I love to like watch videos about places in the world and like documentaries and things like those. So I love to spend time watching how people live in other countries. And I have seen so much about like Iceland and how Iceland has one of the highest rate of hot water or hot springs, as they call them in English. Um, hot springs son como aguas termales. So Iceland is supposed to have one of the highest rates of hot springs in the world. And even though the country is cold because it's really, really cold, um, you can, you know, find hot springs anywhere. And if you're feeling cold, for example, just dive into one of those and probably it's going to be bad for your body because, yeah, I mean, you come from the high cold to the to the high heat. But still, uh, it's going to be feel it's going to feel sorry, amazing, I think. 
So yeah, it's one of the things you know that that Iceland has to offer. However, it also has um the uh, I forgot how to how to say that in English, but the auroras boreales. So that's another thing that you know you have access to, and uh, the green gray lands. Oh, sorry, the green lands, green lands of Iceland, because um what that's one of the highest things that people love to see in Iceland. They they have like those high cliffs near to the coast and all of the all of the cliffs are cliffs pero si quieren saber son los eh, riscos o bueno barrancos como les podríamos decir nosotros pero sí verdad so cliffs um, the high cliffs of Iceland and all the the coasts that they get to those are other things that you know people love to see from that country so hopefully hopefully one day we're going to have the chance to visit it and uh, you know enjoy all the things that you want from there so nice very good um before getting started with the lessons i would like to know do you guys happen to have any questions or anything you would like to clarify um about the curse or about any word you have heard maybe a word that i have mentioned that i have used or everything is clear so far y me digan casi todas las que usted dice no sé qué dice no, but any questions, any anything that you would like to clarify, or is everything good? All right. Judging by your faces, I feel like everything is good. Okie dokie then. So it means that if I get to ask you anything from the class, you guys will be able to answer um right away. So we didn't get to uh, give examples for these, but I think that we're not going to do it right now either. Um, we're going to move on into this conversation. As you already know, the conversations are practiced at the end of the lesson. So tonight, we're very likely to have two conversations as we did uh, a few days ago, because as I said, we are very, getting very close to the end of the lessons. So it is better you know, if we advance as, as fast as possible. So this conversation covers some um, present continuous, which means that there is an activity that is being developed at that time, at that specific time when the conversation is being had, there is also a activity or a set of activities that are being developed. So in this case, we're going to have Steve and his mom. So um, this is how it goes. Hi, mom. What are you doing, Steve? I'm cooking. Why are you cooking now? It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm really hungry. What are you making? Pizza. Hmm, pizza. Now I'm getting hungry. Let's eat. All right, so it's easy, right? It's not complicated. It's only a few lines. Now, the reason why I do this, that the mom lines in a lower pitch is because, um, well, it's supposed that the mom, she just woke up, so you know, she might be sleepy. So as when you wake up, it's very hard that you're going to feel like energized as fast as, you know, as a, as a, as a click. So um, it's better to like, just go with a smooth way with these sentences. So I highly recommend you that, uh, you know, when you do these lines, just do it like that, like it's slow because the mom is supposed to be um, sleepy. Sí, lo que les digo es esto, ¿verdad? Que cuando hago las líneas de la mamá, es mejor, o les recomiendo a quienes hagan esto cuando estemos practicando, que lo hagan un poco más suave, un poco más lento, porque pues se supone que la mamá se acaba de despertar, ¿verdad? Entonces, y pues difícilmente nos vamos a encontrar con alguien que se despierte y de una vez esté como, ah, sí, bien alegre, bien contento y todo, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, it's better, way better if you do it like that. El motivo para esto, muchas veces eh, nos han dicho ya en todas las clases quizás que hemos tenido de inglés, que hagamos ese tipo de cosas y que um, pronunciarlo así, decirlo así, pero quizás nunca nos dicen el por qué. El por qué es porque de esa forma, de hecho, estamos utilizando el idioma como se supone que se utiliza en ese momento, ¿sí? Porque hay palabras que va a depender del momento, del sentimiento, la forma en la que se van a utilizar o en que se van a pronunciar incluso. Entonces, es mejor que de una vez nosotros nos podamos ir acostumbrando, ¿verdad? A hacer esto. Cuando tenemos este tipo de palabras, así o este tipo de oraciones es mucho mejor eh, tratar de hacerlo de esa forma. Como si es algo lento o si es algo que, por ejemplo, eh, no tiene mucho que ver con, 
con algo energético, con alegría o así, mucho, mucho más recomendable que simplemente tratemos de decir las cosas calmados y no, digamos, exasperarnos o ir alegres en algo que no tiene nada que ver con alegría. Entonces, para acostumbrarnos a este tipo de cambios, es que se recomienda que hagamos esto, ¿sí? En el caso de Steve, pues se supone que Steve sí ya tiene su ratito de despierto, ¿verdad? O sea, incluso hasta está cocinando ya. Entonces, o sea, con él se puede utilizar la voz un poco más alta. Así que escuchemos una vez más y luego necesitaré a dos de ustedes para practicar y pues luego nos movemos, ¿verdad? Al siguiente tema, que es el tema de la hora. Pero bueno, una vez más la conversación y luego la práctica suya y nos movemos. So, hi mom, what are you doing, Steve? I'm cooking. Why are you cooking now? It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm really hungry. What are you making? Pizza. Hmm, pizza. Now I'm getting hungry. Let's eat. Muy bien. Ahora, quisiera tener dos participantes que sean voluntarios, por favor, para ayudarme a practicar la conversación. Yo quiero. Okay, so. Yo también. So, um, Roxana and Senia, when you feel ready, you may okay. get started. Empiezo yo. Hi, mom. What are you doing, Steve? I'm cooking. What are you cooking now? Two o'clock in the morning. Well, well, I'm really hungry. Hungry. What are you making? Pizza. Mm, pizza. No, I'm getting hungry. Let us see. Let's eat. Okay. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. You guys did great. Now, solo recuerden, Senia, lo que les dije. Tratar de hacer esto un poco más lento para que se note que tengo sueño, ¿verdad? No como que yo me desperté a ratos y a ratos ando haciendo limpieza y así. Hasta ahorita me fijé que, el, que mi hijo se despertó. Sino que aquí es como que, o sea, el ruido que está haciendo este, el Steve es el que me despertó. Sí. Algo así básicamente se podría, digamos, ver la situación. Like, what are you doing, Steve? O sea, como, ¿me despertaste? ¿Qué estás haciendo? ¿Está de madrugada? O sea, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo bicho? Sí, o sea, algo así tiene que ser la actitud, no el, el decirlo como regular, digamos. Ahora, hay una cosa del inglés que yo no les había mencionado, esto ahorita me acabo de recordar, pero que igual no es bueno que se los hubiese mencionado desde el principio, ¿verdad? Se los digo ahorita y es para que igual, de ahora en más, ustedes ya conozcan de esta característica y pues puedan empezar a aplicarla, ¿sí? Y a esto se le llama linking sounds, ¿sí? Linking sounds. Suena, ¿verdad? Casi como Linkin Park, pero no, 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 nada que ver con Linkin Park. Linkin Sounds son, eh, o se refiere más bien, a esta característica especial que el idioma tiene, en la cual, si ustedes me escuchan hablar a mí, ustedes a veces puedan que digan, ¿y esa chachazón que dijo qué? Sí, o sea, por ejemplo, aquí yo dije, let's eat, let's eat, ¿sí? Entonces, en esto, yo estoy utilizando los Linkin Sounds. En lugar de decir, let's eat, que pues así se, se podría hacer también, ¿verdad? Decir, let's eat, ¿sí? Yo digo, let's eat, let's eat. Entonces, los linking sounds, cuando se usan? Principalmente, se utilizan para poder establecer como una relación entre dos... Eh... Un momento. Ok, sorry. Um, so... Uh, los linking sounds, como les decía, se utilizan cuando estamos tratando de como generar relaciones entre dos o tres palabras. Esto pasa muy a menudo en inglés. Entonces, y es importante que ustedes escuchen y aprendan acerca de ellos porque les juro que les va a ahorrar un montón de dolores de cabeza futuro. Porque ustedes van, todo el tiempo que hablen con alguien en inglés, van a escuchar que tiene eso. O sea, que va a hablar como que si está haciendo una sola chachazón y no separa una palabra de la otra, pero es a raíz de esto, a raíz de los linking sounds. Porque eh, lo que pasa es que principalmente en el inglés norteamericano um, se utiliza esto para que la comunicación sea más rápida, ¿sí? Y por eso hay personas, por ejemplo, que vienen de zonas como el, las, el centro del país, ¿verdad? Texas o así, que o sea, ellos hablan muy, muy rápido. Sí, entonces, y, o sea, lo que dicen no se entiende. En muchas ocasiones no se entiende 
Y pues eso eh, es por eso mismo. Porque, o sea, ponen una palabra justo a la otra, 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 y al final de cuentas dijeron ya todo en oración, pero para ustedes nunca hicieron una separación o una pausa entre palabra y palabra. Pero es por eso. Por ejemplo, acá. Um, digamos, esto de in the morning, sí. In the morning. O sea, no hago un, una separación, ¿verdad? Decir in the morning o in the morning, sino que in the morning, sí. Y si ustedes no supiesen o no, no estuviesen leyendo, probablemente se queden un momento pensando, ¿qué dijo? O sea, ¿qué es eso de in the morning? Sí, o sea, ¿es una palabra diferente? O sea, ¿qué significa eso? Y se los digo porque, o sea, a mí me pasó. Se los juro que yo luché como casi un mes por una frase tan, pero tan sencilla. Y aquellos, y aquí hay alguno que sea fan de los Avengers, eh, tal vez recuerde eso. Un momento, en, el, en Avengers Age of Ultron, o sea, que les estoy hablando de hace días ya, eh, estaba el trailer, ¿verdad?, de la película. Y había un momento en el que el capitán le decía a Thor, bueno, yo desde hace mucho tiempo, desde que empecé a aprender inglés, siempre me ha gustado ver las cosas así en, en inglés. A veces quizás al principio no les entendía, pero yo me esforzaba por tratar, ¿verdad?, de, de verlos en inglés. Ya para ese entonces ya le entendía más o menos. Ah, pues, pero esa vez estaba, yo recuerdo, en el ciber, viendo el, el, el trailer. Ah, pues, y en un momento el capitán le dice a Thor, you had to ask. Entonces yo me quedé, o sea, había entendido casi todo hasta ese punto. Pero ahí fue como, ¿qué? O sea, era el clímax, es lo peor, que era el clímax del trailer, ¿verdad? Cuando le dijo eso, you had to ask. Entonces yo me quedé, ¿qué? O sea, ¿qué dijo? Y, por ejemplo, en el caso de ustedes, si yo les digo eso, you had to ask, ¿qué creen ustedes que significa eso? ¿Qué palabras pueden ser las que estén ahí? You had to ask. Pregunta. Ajá, pregunta es una de ellas. Sí, pregunta es una de ellas. El resto, ¿qué puede significar la frase? You had ask. Bueno, en realidad es preguntar, pero ajá. You had ask. Bueno, para no hacerlo más largo, les cuento de una vez. La frase que el capitán le dice es, tenías que preguntar. Y como les digo, aquellos que sean fan de Marvel han de recordar, el momento en el que el capitán le dice, tenías que preguntar, es cuando, ¿verdad? Cuando... Eh, Thor le dice a Ultron, eso es todo lo que tenías y, o sea, y en ese Ultron sale con todo el montón de robots y es que el capitán le dice, tenías que preguntar, como neta, entonces, esa es la frase que le dijo en inglés you had to ask eso era, you had to ask sí, pero yo les juro que yo buscaba, you had ask, o cualquier cosa, o sea, y una sola palabra pero no, eran cuatro you had to ask sí, cuatro palabras, pero que él simplemente dice, you had to ask. Si no me creen, vayan, busquen el trailer y lo ven de nuevo. Y, o sea, van a ver que, o sea, en, en realidad, ahorita que ya saben qué es, van a decir, nada, estaba fácil, profe. Pero les juro, yo pasé una semana, perdón, un mes, queriendo averiguar qué significa esto. Y el punto es que no me gustaba ver los trailers en español o no quería traicionarlo a, a, la, a la tradición que ya estaba tomando, ¿verdad?, de verlos en inglés. Pero, pues, en ese momento fue como que, ¿saben qué? Yo no voy a encontrar la solución. Eh, y quiero saber qué significa eso así que, o sea, en serio hubo una noche que sabe, creo que fue la noche más obsesiva que tuve, que o sea lo, lo descargué el trailer y lo repetía y lo repetía y lo repetía ese pedacito y nunca podía entender qué era el yuharask, sí, y o sea no le captaba para nada qué era lo del yuharask, pero sí. así que ahí ustedes se pueden encontrar, ¿verdad? con los eh, linking sounds y que eso, en serio, les puede Um, ayudar si aprenden a usarlos y complicar la vida si nunca se, se acostumbran, digamos, a usarlos. Porque son una característica que muchas personas usan, no todo el mundo, pero muchas personas usan, y que eso hace, ¿verdad?, que el inglés suene mucho más complicado en ocasiones. Sorry. So, yeah. But anyway, this conversation, as I said, we're going to practice it towards the end. Right now, what we're going to be looking at is the time. Times around the world. So, The title is, what time is it there? Um, this is something you can ask someone when, for example, um, you want to, or you're talking to a person who lives on other city or like on the other side of the world. And you would like to know what's the time, you know, the current time there. So what's the time there? Or what time is it there? See, what time is it there? So yeah. All right. So uh, here we have the different divisions, the different zones. They go, or they are supposed to go, 
from A to X, all right? Um, I think there is other division. There is not only this one. This is uh, only to make it like a little bit more simple for us to understand. But I feel like the division is another one as well. But uh, as you can see here, we have different cities that land on the same hour zone. But there are others that land over a different time zone or hour zone. So, for example, if you look at Alaska, it, it is covered by basically two different time zones, which are going to be B and D. Now, that's another thing. Overland, sí, eso es bien importante, que sobre la tierra, eh, o sea, digamos, donde hay, ¿verdad? literalmente tierra, las divisiones son eh, mayormente establecidas por eh, lo mismo, divisiones geográficas ya existentes. Entonces, esto es algo importante de recordar. El resto de las zonas horarias aplican eh, con, digamos, mayor eh, rigurosidad sobre el agua, ¿sí? Pero no todas son aplicadas alrededor de todo el mundo. Por eso es que no es como que, digamos, si las zonas horarias se aplicaran de forma eh, completa o se siguiesen completamente, significaría que, por ejemplo, nosotros y Panamá deberíamos tener un tiempo diferente, ¿sí? Porque ya estamos, ¿verdad?, en una zona horaria distinta. Y por eso mismo es que a veces es raro que nosotros y cierta parte de Estados Unidos tenemos la misma hora, ¿sí? Más, más de alguno de ustedes ha de tener algún familiar eh, quien, o sea, vive exactamente sobre la misma hora. Ahora, en Estados Unidos, la otra complicación que hay es el cambio de horarios que, ha, que existe, ¿verdad?, por el horario de invierno. Eso también, a cierto, en cierto modo, complica esta situación. Pero bueno, siguiendo esto, tenemos que Alaska, por ejemplo, they are mainly covered by the time zone B. So they have A, B, and Z. Or, sorry, A, B, and D. C is an hour zone or time zone that doesn't cover any land. Si ustedes se fijan, la zona horaria C no cubre básicamente ninguna ciudad ni ningún espacio, ¿verdad? Uh, D. D is the one that is known as the um, west for the United States. So the west coast is normally going to be under the D time zone. So the cities or most important cities that are over this time zone are going to be Vancouver and Los Angeles. Um, there is also Seattle, if you want to count it. There is San Diego and many other cities, but the main ones are Vancouver and Los Angeles. So yeah, that's time zone D. Now, we have time zone E. E is the zone that people know as the mountains in the U.S. Sí, la or el horario de las montañas. Este no es, hoy en día no es tan común. En la actualidad, el mountain and, el, and, and the center hours are basically the same. Entonces, ya no se usa tanto, ¿verdad? La, el horario de montaña. Antes, si ustedes viesen noticias de antes de Estados Unidos, sí era bastante más común que se utilizara el horario de montaña. Hoy algunos pueblos todavía tal vez lo mantienen porque pues sienten, ¿verdad? Que es su derecho tener esa diferencia, pero no es como tan oficial como, los, como solía ser. Hoy en realidad existen más el West, Center, and East. Sí, es mucho más común que existan solamente esos tres. Pero bueno, uh, Time Zone E covers mostly the mountains of Canada, of the U.S., and part of Mexico. So, yeah, that's for the mountains time zone. Then we have time zone letter F. This time zone covers the center of the U.S., um, where, you know, there are states like Louisiana, Minnesota, Iowa. So, yeah, the center of the U.S. and Central America. And also half of Mexico. So, yeah, we have those. Oh, yeah, and here in time zone E, there's where we have Mexico City. So Mexico City is supposed to be one hour behind us. See, ¿sí? una hora menos que nosotros. So, yeah, and um, time zone F, as I said, the center of the U.S. and Central America. Then we have time zone G. Time zone G covers normally um, what is included on the east coast of the U.S. and Canada which is going to be, in this case, Montreal, uh, New York, which are like the main cities on time zone G. Then we also have Lima in Peru and sections, of course, of Colombia and um, Bolivia. So those are like the main places that are under time zone G. Sí, la hora eh, G sería esa. Then we have uh, time zone H. Time zone H covers part of... Uh, um, Greenland, yeah, parts of Greenland, and also San Juan, 
and then we also have uh persons of venezuela parts of brazil and chile so time zone h covers these different hours so yeah then if we go ahead and look at um letter i or time time zone i the most important city that is between this is sao paulo or our sao paulo and brasilia but this one covers um brazil a huge chunk of brazil paraguay uruguay argentina and all the countries that um you know represent like the guianas as well so there we have it that's for time zone i then we have time zone j it doesn't cover any land apart from iceland so no land apart from iceland then we have time zone k that's another one that is basically just you know on the sea so it's it's basically it basically doesn't touch any any portion of land then we have the original time zone the reason why this is supposed to be the original original time zone is because um time zones were actually established in um England. So this is basically the way in which they decided to divide it, you know, part to the east, part to the west, and they were supposed to be the original, which in this case is going to be recognized as time zone time zone L. And it covers London, Portugal, and a part of Africa. So yeah, London, Portugal, and a part of Africa. Then we move into time zone M, and time zone M is going to cover a huge chunk of Europe, basically including most of the countries in Europe. Then we also have um, a portion of the countries in Africa. And yeah, those are going to be the main ones for time zone M. Then time zone N doesn't touch much on Europe. It doesn't really cover much on Europe because Europe is basically isolated from time zone N, but it does cover a big chunk of Africa. So time zone N has a chunk, a big chunk of Africa, uh, including Cape Town even. So time zone P. Time zone P covers the last portion of, the, of uh, Europe over here, um, even including a bit of Moscow. But then it goes all the way down into um like the middle east and apart from that that's it you know so basically just the last portion of europe and a piece of the middle east then we have time zone q time zone q is not necessarily covered however the one that is used or i mean it, it is used in india that's basically the only place in the world where time zone q is used then we have time zone r part of Russia, part of uh, Uzbekistan, and other countries that used to be part of the um, URS, and part of India. So that's for time zone R. Time zone S, once again, some Russia, and some other part of Asia. Time zone S, we were going to have a big part of the tiny countries of Asia, a big part of Russia. And in this one is where we're going to have countries like south and north korea we're gonna have also um uh the philippines i think are included in this one so yeah and also half or a big part of australia so yeah time zone t is one of those that is you know very important then we have time zone u time zone u is used on russia and australia apart from this there is nothing else so russia and australia then we have time zone b also some russia and we also have japan and other portions of uh, countries over here um we also have it on australia then we have um time zone w just on some portion of russia the rest is not used at all then we have time zone x which is going to be covering the last portion of russia and um new zealand over here so that's you know a little bit of the division that we have when it comes to times so uh this is going to take us into the next conversation that we're going to be practicing tonight which is this one so uh the, the conversation is supposed to be taking place between people who live very far apart from one another so here we have debbie and john those are the two people being part of it and we're going to hear what they have to say to one another and how the conversation develops. So, first, this is how it goes. 
Hello. Hi, David. This is John. I'm calling from Australia. Australia. I'm at a conference in Sydney. Remember? Oh, right. What time is it there? It's 10 p.m. And it's 4 o'clock there in Los Angeles, right? Yes, 4 o'clock in the morning. 4 a.m. Oh, I'm really sorry. That's okay. I'm awake now. Okay, aquí esa conversación incluye bastante así como de sarcasmo, que esa es otra cosa. En inglés el sarcasmo es una cosa bien, bien importante. Si ustedes no son sarcásticos, pues en inglés se, es recomendable que traten de hacerlo un poco, porque en muchas conversaciones van a necesitar, ¿verdad?, ser un poco sarcásticos para que se logre terminar de, um, digamos, de dar el entendimiento necesario en la conversación. Así que acá, en el caso de Debbie y John, están hablando, o sea, Debbie contesta el teléfono, ¿verdad? como, hola, sí, y John le dice, o sea, que es John que está llamando desde Australia. Y Debbie pregunta, ¿a Australia? Y entonces John le dice, sí. Eh, oh, perdón. Eh, John le dice, sí. Es una, una conferencia en, en Sydney, ¿recuerdas? Y él le dice, oh, cierto. ¿Qué hora es ahí? Entonces él le dice, oh, son las 10 de la noche. Y son las 4 ahí en Los Ángeles, ¿verdad? Entonces y ella le dice, sí, las 4 de la mañana. Sí. Entonces si él le contesta, 4 de la mañana. Ah, lo siento mucho. Entonces, y ella le dice, ¿verdad? Ya está bien, ya estoy despierta ahora, o sea, como me despertó básicamente, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, otra vez, importante, eh, para los que hagan las líneas azules, ¿sí? Dos cosas importantes. Primero, la parte del sueño que también quisiera que apliquen, ¿verdad? En la otra conversación, que, o sea, que es como que pues, esta persona se acaba de despertar, tampoco es que va a estar tan activa, ¿verdad? Se inicia con hello. Uh. Y así, hasta con un bostezo. Si no bostezan, no vale. Sí. O sea, hello. Y luego, o sea, la otra persona, pues claro, no hay problema si es aquí, ¿verdad? Hi, David, this is John. I'm calling from Australia. Y luego ella le pregunta, Australia. O sea, como confundida, ¿verdad? Australia, ¿por qué Australia? Then John replies, yeah, I'm at a conference in Sydney, remember? Es como, o sea, tratando de hacerlo recordar, ¿verdad? Entonces ella le dice, oh, right, what's the time there? O sea, como, como queriendo saber, ¿verdad? De una vez, ¿qué hora es ahí? Porque pues ella casi ya se dio cuenta de que su amigo John está llamándole creyendo que está temprano. Entonces ella le dice, oh, it's 10 p.m. And it's 4 o'clock there in L.A., right? O sea, como diciéndole, ¿verdad? Eso de que, ah, son las 10, o sea, y son las 4 ahí en Los Ángeles, ¿verdad? Y ella le dice, sí, las 4. Yes, 4 o'clock in the morning. Entonces aquí es donde empieza la parte que les digo ya de lo que sería como sarcástico, ¿verdad? Entonces se le da un mayor énfasis a la palabra morning pero con el sentido de, um, o sea, de aclarar como de la mañana, o sea, como si algo, como si a ustedes les disgustara lo que la persona está haciendo. Entonces, ¿por qué es el punto? Sí, yes, four o'clock in the morning, o sea, como cuatro, pero de la mañana. Luego, él dice, o sea, como ya con, con ¿cómo sería? Como con lástima, digamos, o con eh, ganas de disculparse, ¿verdad? De decir, four a.m., oh, I'm really sorry. Sí, o sea, como las cuatro de la mañana, en serio, lo siento. Y por último, o sea, ya Debbie le dice, that's okay, I'm awake now. O sea, como, está bien, ya me desperté ahora. O sea, como, ajá, ¿verdad? Básicamente, me despertaste, ¿sí? Así que eso esperaría. Sueño al principio, sarcasmo después. Y eso es genial, ¿verdad? Pasar del sueño al sarcasmo de inmediato. So, um, I would like to have two participants to um, practice this conversation voluntarily. Y vamos a revisar un poco de lo what's the time y luego hacemos la práctica de las dos conversaciones de una vez. So, two participants, two volunteers, please. In the last conversation, I saw that um, Karen was wanting to um, to practice. So, I don't know, Karen, would you like to do this one? Perdón, casi no le escuché. Sorry? Casi no le escuché. Oh, okay. That's okay. So, um... Who else would like to try? Me. All right, Miriam. And uh, who else? Who will join Miriam on the practice? I feel like Edenison ah. wants to do it. Okay. All right. So, um, Edenison and Miriam, whenever you feel ready, you may start.
Hello. Hi, Debbie. This is John. I'm calling from Australia. Australia? I'm at a conference in Sydney, remember? All right. What is Tyler? It, it's 10 p.m. and it's 4 o'clock there in LA, right? Yes, 4 o'clock in the morning. 4 a.m.? Oh, I'm really sorry. That's okay. I am awake now. Good. Very good. I love it. Nice. That's how I expect, you know, that uh, that we do it. Because, yeah, uh, in the case of uh, Debbie, well, she was, a, she was sleeping. So she was, you know, just resting there. And then the phone rang and it woke her up. So it's a, it's of course understandable that she's not gonna have you know the best attitude towards her, her friend. So yeah, it's recommended that we do it like that. Now, um, let's see this over here. We're gonna just have a, a glimpse at this and then we're gonna go into the practice, all right? So here we have it. What time is it? As I said before, this is the most common way in which people have been um, used to asking for the time, simply saying, what time is it? However, as I said before, I want you guys to start using something like this because it sounds much more updated, much more um, new. And, you know, it will make you sound even better. So you can say this phrase, what's the time? What's the time? However, this is only meant to be used with people that you know. Because when you're talking to someone who just um you just saw on the street or something and you're requesting the time, it is way better to ask what time is it. But if you're talking to someone who um you know and like you know you have like a relationship with this person, it's better if you use what's the time, or I recommend to use what's the time. Um now here we have different options. One of them, or the main one is when the time is at the, you know, the zero, zero, like the hour is completely even. Uh, that's when we're going to use the o'clock form. It doesn't matter what time it is, you know, what hour it is, as far as it is on the zero, zero form or the zero, zero numbers, it's going to be o'clock. And this is the same as in Spanish saying en punto. ¿sí? Básicamente es lo mismo. ¿verdad? Con una hora se encuentra con cero minutos. Ahí decimos o'clock. So, what time is it? It's one o'clock, it's two o'clock, it's three o'clock. Independently of what hour it is, you're going to say o'clock cuando se trata de la hora en punto. Sí. Pero bueno, ahorita creo que ya con eso, eh, mañana vamos a seguir revisando esto como les decía, solo era un momentito. Vamos a las conversaciones, no sé si ya tienen las capturas de estas. Eh, si no, pues saquémoslas ahorita. Y vamos a pasar a los breakout rooms a, a practicar esas dos conversaciones. So we have this one. What time is it there? And this other one. I'm really hungry. See? Um, so I'm going to be creating the breakout rooms right now. And you guys are going to go. And tonight we're going to be divided in larger groups, which are going to be of six to seven people. So as I have always told you or recommended you, try to practice as much as possible. Try to practice for as long as we can. We're gonna have around six minutes tonight. So it's not a lot a lot of time, but still, you know, I feel like it's enough for all of us to practice. So let's go into the breakout rooms and practice the conversations that we have for this evening. Hola, no sé si alguien tomó captura. Yo no. No sé si alguien más tomó.
no sé quién quiere empezar, si quieren, empieza conmigo. Yo solo esa tengo, no sé la otra. Está bien, practicamos con esa entonces. Vaya, yo soy Steve. Bueno. Hi, Mom. What are you doing, Steve? I am cook cooking. Why are you cooking now? It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, I am really. Um, ¿Quién más? No sé quién falta. Yo. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, mom. What are you doing, Steve? In cooking. Why? Why are you cooking now? It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, he's really hungry. What are you making? Pizza? Mm, pizza. Now I'm getting the hungry. Let's eat. Si quieren pueden seguir con la otra, ahí está ya. Sí, gusta seguir Bye. con Bye. los grupos. ¿Cómo? Con los mismos, así que... Ah, ok, ok, ok. Fluyo entonces. Sí. Ok, empieza tú. Hello. Hi, David. This is John. I calling for Australia. Australia? I am at, uh, at a the conference in Sydney, remember? Oh, right. What time is what is, what time is there? It's 10 p.m. and is your uh, club there in the Los Angeles, right? Yes, four o'clock in the morning. Four four a.m. Oh, I am really sorry. Thanks. Okay. I I want to now. Va, ah. se, se oyó con Robert, creo, ¿verdad? Sí. Okay. Hello. Hi, David. This is John. I am calling from Australia. Australia? I am at a conference in Sydney, remember? All right. What time is it is there? It's 10 at night and it's four o'clock there in Los Angeles, right? Yes, four o'clock in the morning. For a night, oh, I am really sorry. That's great. Uh, I wait, no. Okay, same. Um, hello. Hi, Debbie. This is John. I'm calling from Australia. Australia? I am at a conference in Sydney, remember? All right, what time is there? It's 10 p.m. and it is for, sorry. It's for cloud in Los Angeles, right? So, nice, very good work people, very, very well done. Um, and as per usual, you know, it's a pleasure to hear from you guys. It's a pleasure to see you working. Um, so yeah, for now, basically that's all the time that we had, you know, available this evening. All I have to say is, um, thank you guys very much for your attention and your participation on this evening's class. I hope that, you know, tomorrow we're going to going to be here again for our second last class and wrap it up you know as it has to be done so thank you very much i hope you guys have an amazing uh evening and see you tomorrow so bye-bye for now bye-bye thank you okay bye-bye okay.